Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be looking at how you can create a photo like this one using two separate photographs like these using multiple exposure photos and masking. Alright guys, so when you're using multiple exposure photos and using these techniques in the field, you're going to encounter a few issues that you need to know about before you go out and take these photographs. Number one issue you're going to find yourself dealing with is the crowd issue. Now, people go to these locations and look at them and want to take their own photos. There's really nothing you can do about crowds coming to the same place that you want to photograph, but you can go to locations at different times of day. If it's crowded at one time of day, look at it at another time of day. I particularly like to paint the corners of the day, meaning going places very early in the morning when you have a lot of soft light at sunrise or going later in the day when you also have that golden light at sunset or you can even go to locations at night like we did with this one. Now, speaking of night photographs and taking multiple exposure photographs like these, you're going to deal with light issues as well, especially if you go in difficult lighting scenarios like night photography. Now, these photographs, what you wanted to do was really get a good foreground in the image as well as light the lighthouse well and that was particularly hard in this situation because there were so many lights on the lighthouse itself if you wanted to light the foreground property you needed to use a long exposure to do so but if you did that you blew out the light on the lighthouse but if you wanted to get the light right on the lighthouse, you underexposed the foreground so you couldn't exactly get both in the same image properly. That's where the multiple exposure part comes into play. And we can do that using different exposures like I just talked about. You use one photograph to get the foreground properly and you use the separate photograph to get the lighthouse properly. Now the first image we use, we did an eight second exposure at F2 and ISO 100. The second photograph we did a 30 second exposure to get that foreground nice and right, but it blew out the lighthouse. We did that at 30 seconds F2 ISO 100 and we're going to use these two to combine in post-processing. Now that brings us to the third thing that could get in your way of difficulty when you're dealing with these multiple exposure photographs and that is your post-processing knowledge. If you don't know how to do this correctly, it's going to be an issue for you, but lucky for you, we're going to get into the computer right now and look at how you go through the steps of combining these multiple exposure photographs in both Lightroom and Photoshop. Now you have to have both softwares to do this. There's no way to mask a photograph like we're going to do in just Lightroom. You can do everything in Photoshop if you have raw bridge but using Lightroom and Photoshop is much more easier for me based on organization. The power that Lightroom has and the capability it has to make the initial edits and then bring it over into Photoshop to do the masking techniques that we're going to look at. So let's go over right into the computer and see exactly how we can work through this post-processing techniques of combining these multiple exposure images using our masking and layers. Alright guys, so now that we're on the computer, we're going to look at exactly how to do preliminary edits on these photographs in Lightroom and then throw it over in Photoshop to do the layer masking to combine these multiple exposure images. Now I know a lot of times Photoshop and especially things like layer masking can be very intimidating to people who aren't necessarily used to using the Photoshop software, but I have a big secret. It's not that hard. If you just take a few minutes like we're going to do right now and learn the techniques, it's really, really easy to do in the future, especially when you're only dealing with two images like this. Now, if you get into dealing with like five, six, seven images and combining those and masking, it can get a little dicey, but we're going to be using these two images looking at exactly how to combine these. So let's first start in Lightroom. We're gonna to go to the develop module with our first image. And remember, this is the image we shot to get the correct exposure on the lighthouse right here. We don't have the foreground right. So don't worry about the foreground in this image. We're only worried about the top 
half of the image and the lighthouse itself. So let's go through some of these and look at exactly what to do. Remember our exposure on the lighthouse is correct. So I'm not really worried about that. I may add some more contrast, um, dial the highlights down a little bit to get that like green light that's on the lighthouse show up. I'm going to bring up some shadows on it as well to really get some of those shadow details coming out. And then I'll dial down the whites. Uh, and may bring up the blacks just a little bit as well, just to see how that looks. So that looks pretty good. I'm also gonna increase our clarity on this to bring out more details of the lighthouse and maybe bring up some vibrance. But since we have so much green on this lighthouse, I'm not really sure I wanna do too much. So I'm not gonna go crazy with that. And saturations too, I wanna to bring up. Now with the saturations, we, we brought it up to plus six, but it made the lighthouse really green, not necessarily something I wanna work with. Um, so I'm gonna come down here to the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, and I'm gonna dial down the green saturation to kind of get some of that out of there. And we see in the yellow, we have some green tints in the yellow as well. Uh, I'm gonna dial that back to more yellow on the hue slider for the yellow colors and the yellow tones in this image. And that looks pretty good. So we don't have to do a whole lot here with this image, just because we're dealing with the lighthouse itself. We may bring this up in exposure just to see what it does to the sky. That's fine. And then I'll also come all the way down to the bottom and there's a blue sat blue primary saturation slider that I'm gonna increase just to see what it does. It doesn't do anything, so I'm gonna hit Control or Command Z to undo that change. I always like to do that because sometimes it makes the yellows pop in the photograph a little bit more. So that looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do for the sky in this image, um, since I want the sky to come out a little bit more since we're worried about the top half of the photograph in this particular photo, is come over here to my adjustment brush. Now, with these, we want to get everything right in the images before we put them over into the layer masking. So I'm gonna get the sky right uh, that I'm gonna be working with right here. And I have my exposure all the way down. If you want to see like on a night sky exactly what you're painting in, bring the exposure all the way up so you can see exactly where your adjustment brush is painting. And you'll see some of the details that it's gonna be uh, painting in as well. So I'm just gonna paint the sky of this photograph just to bring out a little bit details in the clouds. And then I'm gonna double click on the exposure to bring that back down to where it was and then just slowly slide that up until I see a little bit of detail in the sky. Maybe a little bit of color. Bring up some of the shadows in that as well to get some of the ambient light that was going on in the background and then also bring up the black tones as well. Now you see in this photograph, especially with this selection right here, you can click on this little dot and it'll show you in red where you've painted. Now I got some of the lighthouse in there. So what I'm gonna do with this brush is I'm gonna hold down Alt and you'll see it brings up a minus sign and I'm gonna decrease the size of this brush by hitting the left bracket key and I'm just gonna paint this back out. And what it does is removes the adjustment brush that you put on this section of the photograph. So I just want this to be back down to normal. And then it also did it on these rocks down here. And we're gonna be worried about that with the next photograph that we do for the foreground. And it also painted a little bit too much back out. So I'm gonna reduce the brush size not holding down the alt key anymore to paint this adjustment brush feature back in just on the edges um, where we painted it out just getting these small slight edges so you can't see like where we just painted out in the image we're just going to fill that right back in uh, getting a little more detail and getting a little more finer on the edges that we have uh, just around the lighthouse so really good that looks fine to me uh, before we go in and make changes to the other image. That looks good for the top half. Now, what we're gonna do now is work on the bottom half. 
So I'm just gonna hit the right arrow since I have these selected at one time. And you can see right away, like the lighthouse itself is completely blown out. So we're not gonna worry about the top half in this photograph, we're gonna be worried about the bottom half and the foreground portion of the image. So I still have the adjustment brush selected. I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'm gonna be working uh, with the foreground here. So I'm gonna increase the exposure in the image. Again, do not worry about the lighthouse. I know it's blown out and you're gonna be tempted to want to adjust some things based on that light, but just don't do it. So I'm gonna adjust uh, some highlights down here, bring up some shadows, and you're gonna see some of the rocks in the foreground start to come out. What we really want to accomplish is um, bringing out some of the rocks that are underneath the surface of the water here. And it's gonna become quite apparent once we start using the adjustment brush after we finish using a lot of these preliminary editing tools. I'm gonna to bring down the green saturation. So we're gonna be doing a lot of the same things in this image because we had the same colors and lights. It's just we're worried about the shadows in the foreground in this one as well. Um, so I don't really have to worry about noise reduction uh, in these as well because I'm using an ISO of 100. If we got into something like ISO 400 to 800 to 1600, I might worry about that a little bit more. Luckily, we didn't have to do that with this one. So they're the preliminary edits with this photograph, kind of the same way we did it with the other one. We're just worried about shadows instead of highlights like we were on the last photograph. And then I'm gonna do the adjustment brush on this one as well, but I'm gonna be painting in the foreground instead of the sky. So just gonna start painting in right here uh, using the black effect. I'm just gonna paint this all completely black so I can see exactly where I'm editing. And it's gonna look pretty bad just using this exposure all the way down. Then I'm gonna double click on the exposure to bring that back up to normal. And I'm just gonna start increasing that until I see a lot of these details. Just increase that a lot of the way. Don't have to be too worried about it. And we can paint out the, the stuff that we don't want in there in just a second. Also gonna bring up the shadows and this really is what we want. We start to see these rocks down here in the foreground that are underneath the surface of the water. That's exactly what we want. Now, a lot of it looks a little bit too bright. So what can we do? Well, there are a couple different things. You can use the Alt key and paint out what we did, but since the contrast is going to be so great, we're gonna use masking in the layers to do that instead. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command Z and undo that brush stroke that I just did. And I'm gonna hit done on this because I'm pleased with what it looks like in the foreground. Next, what we do is I'm gonna go back to the library and come into a view where we can see both of them at once. So now we can see side by side, we have a sky here and a foreground here and how we can combine those. So select both of them, select the first one and then hold your shift key down and select the second image and right click on those and you're going to go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop and just click on that. And if you have Photoshop along with Lightroom, it's going to automatically open these as layers in the Photoshop software. All right, now we have our two layers in Photoshop coming up and what we're going to be looking at is the masking tool. Now, you need to look at what photograph is on top of the other one in the layers. So we have the properly exposed lighthouse on top of the properly exposed foreground. So what do I want to do here? What do I want to eliminate to reveal in the other photograph? Well, I want to eliminate the foreground in this photograph to reveal it in the other one. So I want to basically erase the bottom half of this image to bring up what shows up in the bottom half in this image. So what I'm going to be focused on is the paintbrush tool and also what colors that show up in the color palette down here on the left side of the screen if you look at where my mouse is. 
if you have black showing up, black is going to eliminate the part of the photograph wherever you're painting. If you switch that, it would reveal things, so it would bring back parts of this photograph that we're looking at. So I'm gonna select it on black right now as the foreground color, just because I'm eliminating the bottom half of this image. But before we touch the paintbrush, we have to create the mask. Now, we have our top layer selected, which is what you need to be doing. And you come down here to this rectangle with a circle in it, and that's your layer mask. So just select that tool, and it's going to have this layer mask feature selected. Now, so be sure that you have this mask selected. If you select this, the actual photograph in the layer, you're actually going to be painting a color on top of this image, which is not what we want. If we have the mask selected, we can basically use the black to eliminate the foreground in this image. So I'm gonna select the paintbrush, and it's gonna bring up my brush. Now, I want to slowly bring in parts of this foreground using the mask. So I have my opacity of the brush on 50%, and a pretty soft edge. If you want to adjust that, you can adjust the hardness of it, but I like a very soft edge so that the changes that you make are very subtle and you can't really see what I've done with the brush. So we have the brush selected, we made sure our opacity is 50% or less so we can work with different opacities in this photograph, and we also have made sure that we're on the right color for the mask, black, that we're using. So next, all I need to do is start painting this black color on. And as I start painting, you can see it's revealing the foreground that we've made in Lightroom. And I'm just gonna slowly paint this in, kind of being very careful on the edges not to go too far into the sky, but just slowly paint this in into the foreground. And once you've made one pass, it's going to show up on your layer mask as this kind of like hazy gray. That's because we've used a 50% opacity. Now we have the rocks on either side showing up really nicely. We have the reflection of the lighthouse showing up really nicely in the foreground, but we're missing the rocks that are underneath the surface of the water, which is what we want to see in the foreground. So since I have a 50% opacity painted in, I can come over and start painting in the water and it's doing another 50% opacity on that water and it's going to reveal a little bit more than what we just did. This is why I like working with opacities more than just coming in and doing like a 100% brush on the entire image because then we would have had to deal with the highlights on the rocks that are in the background. So that looks pretty good, but I wanna bring this out just a little bit more, maybe get a little bit more detail on these rocks. So I'm gonna make yet another pass on the very bottom of this foreground, and it might bring out just a little bit more detail that we have here, and that looks pretty good. I like where that's at. So we are done with the masking of this photograph. We're not worried about anything else, and this is the overall photograph that we're left with and it looks really, really good. So we've combined an eight second exposure with a 30 second exposure, getting the light right on the lighthouse and the light right in the foreground using this infield technique and post-processing technique together to create a really, really special image that can go very well in anyone's portfolio.